All right. I think we are on. We're good. Um, I may just need to adjust the volume here a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. All right. That sounds great. Uh, hello once again. This is uh, Joe with The Study Podcast with The Study Streaming with The Theologic Us. And I just realized my windows are open. So if you hear some strange noise, I do have a dynamic mic that doesn't pick up on that. But you're rest assured that you're probably going to get it. Um, I have uh, I have a little bit of tech update, but it's nothing fancy. Uh, well, first and foremost, I am, uh, if it sounds, I wonder if you guys are picking up on the the uh, better audio quality. It's not going to make the stream better, but the, at least the audio quality is going to be tip-top. Uh, I am borrowing a friend's uh, Focusrite Scarlet uh, 4i4. Uh, I need to put, like, anytime I mention this, because, like, in the, last, in the last stream, I mentioned a book, and then today I'm mentioning a product, and so you guys are like, oh, where are the products at? Yeah, I have show notes. And so I'm going to start making sure that I put those in. So, uh, uh, Thorns, Note to Self, and then also the Scarlet uh, 4i4 audio interface. Okay, I'm writing these down, so I'll remember later. Uh, the inner, I was uh, shopping for a, a mixer to do, you know, adjust the gain, adjust the EQ, but separately out of the, out of the Mac OS. Also, I really would like a mute button. Uh, I have a friend who works sound at our church and he actually stirred me towards a audio interface uh, that has way better preamps for the mic. And I was like, is that going to make much of a difference? Uh, but I did a little test, did a little recording, and I, it's it's miles better. It's it, it sounds like I think beforehand, just going straight in uh, and re using OBS to record and all that. It sounded like it really sounded like I was uh, talking through a mask. And, and then this level it should be so much much clearer. Um, there's also I had. Um, I'm going to see if I can do this on the fly. No promises, though. No promises. Browser, display capture, image. I actually have captioning for my stream, but I forgot to set it up. So I'm not going to do that on the fly. This is not what this is about. We are, it's Friday. It is Friday. We're a little bit early because I have a church function to go to tonight. Uh, it's about discipleship. So, you know, I'm about that life um so we're, uh, we're again on friday we're going to walk through uh the gospel of mark and we're going to walk through family devotions and and it, again i kind of aim this towards like kids uh uh but i think it's also pretty appropriate if you want to do something with your roommates you want to do this with your parents it uh, doesn't assume anything doesn't assume that you come in knowing that god is trinity and triune and three and one it doesn't assume any of that uh so uh it's definitely a walk through it's a definitely a reset um let me mention i'm gonna mention this and let's see if i can do this right <clears throat> let's go to uh, I'm, i swear this is all related um starting at verse i think it's hebrews um uh, 10 whoa okay i'm gonna have to also uh i don't know if you see the jumping back and forth i have set up obs using hotkeys but now i'm kind of like what hotkeys should i use uh i think i'm gonna have to use my function keys because it's really responsive uh even if you don't have obs selected anyway enough of that uh let's see if i can get this do 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 See if you can see this. All right, cool, cool. All right, <clears throat> so here is this is the writer of Hebrews, and this is the reason why 
in family devotions. Well, I actually do it with any anything I teach or preach or proclaim. I don't assume anybody knows anything. Um, and I always come back to this passage because I think uh, it is so, so important. And have I mentioned this in the stream before? And I'll mention it again. So just get used to it. Um, in Hebrews 5, starting in verse 11, we have a great deal to say about this. And is it difficult to explain since you have become too lazy to understand? This isn't a CSB. Although by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the basic principles of God's revelation again. You need milk not solid food. Now, everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced with the message about righteousness because he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. Chapter 6. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teaching about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith in God, teaching about ritual washings, laying on the the hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And, and, look at verse 3. We will do this if God permits. Okay? So, all that said, let's get started. Uh, let's get started in Family Devotions. We're going to do Mark. And it helps if I click it on. Let's do uh, Mark 1, 2 through 6. Let's pray about this. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us here today. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for your son. Lord, wherever we might be at, wherever we are to share the word, Lord, would you bring your Holy Spirit and have him fill our souls, fill our hearts, so that we're able to minister according to what you've called us to do and what you've commissioned us to do. We thank you, we love you, we praise you in your son's holy name. Amen. All right. Now, I don't know if you have read the the blog before. In I was preparing for this session of Mark, and I actually had to do a whole switch around. I actually had to change it up a little bit. Um, basically, what I had here before was Mark chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, which kind of cut it right at the uh, Isaiah prophecy. Uh, but what I made this, and I'm going to show you what I did. Um, I made this really about John, but using, if Mark is not going to bog down in the John the Baptist's life, in, in his death, if he's not going to be bogged down in that, then I'm going to take away what Mark is trying to do here. So here we go. Here's the text. Uh, Mark 1 uh, starting at verse 2. As as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I, am send, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all of the country of Judea and all of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. Here's the devotion. This is where I'm going to take away. This is where you can teach, you can teach your household in that the point I think of this passage is that the gospel of Mark, so as every word that came out of the prophet's mouth prior to the, the, the appearance of Jesus Christ was about Jesus Christ. And as we can clearly see that John the Baptist's life was nothing more than Paving the way of the Lord. Paving the way of Jesus Christ. Let's start off with this. Let me refer back to this. Matthew 22, starting at verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked the question to test him. Teacher, what is, which commandment in the law, which command in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. So several hundred years ago, before Jesus even stepped foot on the earth, there was a man named Isaiah who was charged to foretell, or as the Bible calls it, prophesy about Jesus. Without knowing his name, not knowing the nature of it, all we know is on based all of the prophecies ever since God spoke to man back in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. But within that prophecy about Jesus, you look at, go read the uh, prophet Isaiah. Within that, there was another man that named John that would pave the way for the Lord. Now, John was special in that he was the last prophet before the coming of Christ. But don't forget this. John was no more special than any other believer in the Bible that is called by God and commissioned by God to point our words, our actions, our lives, and our hearts back to Christ. Let me give you an example. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians 10.31 again calls us to worship. So whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory, do everything to the glory of God. So if we're saved by God, then it stands a reason that we are then saved to God. Therefore, our lives are to be about God. And this is what Jesus says, uh, Matthew 16. Then the, Jesus said to the disciples, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whomever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me will find it. For what it, will it benefit someone if he gains the whole world, yet loses his life? Or what will anyone give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will reward accord, each according to what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who would not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The point of this passage is that if we say we follow God, if we say that, yes, we believe that the, the Bible is real, God is real, Jesus is alive, uh, Jesus did come, but he did die on a cross, that he did raise from the dead, that he did uh, ascend to the right hand of the Father. Uh, to say all of that also indicates that you have you have laid your life down for our great king you have laid your life down for Jesus you are doing whatever it takes in order to obey God and take him at his word and then like, again, the pushback is, well, we can't do that perfectly. I'm like, yeah, I know. But are you actually doing it? Are you actually trying? Are you prayerfully every day asking, Lord, what can I do? I hear your commandments. I hear your, I hear your commission. What, what is mine to do? And if you read the Bible that is God-inspired and God-breathed out, that was meant for you, to, that is a testimony of God, then, then what is stopping you from obeying God? What is what is keeping you from from fulfilling the Great Commission? What is keeping you from doing your part to proclaim the gospel to every creature, to go and raise disciples and baptism baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? 
So here's some discussions that you would want to present to your household. What do you think it means to point my life to Christ? What does it mean? Again, reading his word, praying, asking God, what is mine to do? Let me read your word. Let's let the Holy Spirit come and speak to me and let me go and do likewise. What do you think to make your life completely about Christ? Is it is it a cultural thing? Is it like, oh, I'm going to do everything that people at church do? Or is it is it based on his word? You tell me. What do we do with our words when we speak to one another? If the church... If the church is... And the ministry of the people in the church is to build up one another. We just read the second, the first great commandment is to love the Lord your God. The second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And we're to build up one another. Not just people in the church, but people around us. People, uh, our neighbors, our literal neighbors, and whomever would be a fellow human. Uh, how, do, how does one build up? There's, there's things you can do, but there's also things you can say that are encouraging. Think about that. And how can we make our words point back to Christ? That's the proclamation. That's going to raise in disciples. So last but not least, if the Old Testament, if we read in the Bible where there's prophecies in the Old Testament and they talk about Christ, here's, here's, a, here's a gotcha question. What's the New Testament about? Go and read Luke 24 and come back with the answers so i hope you enjoyed this it's really quick real uh short um i will try to be less about the announcements and what i'm doing and blah 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 and all that stuff as we get into the rhythm and then eventually uh these little devotions they don't take very long uh and that's like kind of like you know like your kids they can't even uh or people like you know what this is maybe a uh, this is not the best use of my time, but make it short, make it sweet, but keep, keep thinking of like discussion questions that you can give that kind of stir up the questions. It's not, you're going to take up a lot of time doing it. It's that they're going to take up a lot of time by God's grace. They're going to take up a lot of time discussing it. Okay. So anyway, keep on. Uh, if you need any prayers, send us your prayer requests. I love you. And I will talk to you later. God bless.